I mean, to start by describing this place, it's this green island that's nestled in the middle of the Gulf of Alaska. It's a working town. This is not a tourist town the way a lot of coastal communities are. And I love that part of it. And the history of why this lab is here is that Kodiak used to be the king crab capital of the world. And so when NOAA needed a research group focused on king crab, this was the logical place to have it. The shellfish lab in Kodiak at the NOAA facility is very important. It has a wet lab downstairs that is a place where live crab are held in tanks for a variety of studies. We can do things like look at how much they grow with every molt, how big they have to be to mate. Those are all basic parameters that go into the process that allows us to estimate the population that can be harvested every year. All the people involved in Alaska fisheries are all unified in their desire to have healthy fisheries over the long term. And I think that there's sort of a sense of togetherness in that and that we're all sort of building these collaborations and working towards this kind of end goal of long-term sustainability for these fisheries. Well, I think ultimately we all want to see our fisheries as healthy as possible. My group in NOAA, adf &G folks next door, BSFRF, we're all focused on crab fisheries in the Bering Sea and we all have that shared vision. We want those fisheries to work. One of the unique things about BSFRF is that our board is directly involved in the crab industry. About half of them are fishermen. The industry directly funds research and the feedback that we receive directly from crabbers and harvesters and our supporters, we use that as a way of informing what we're gonna do. Ultimately, scientists just want to understand the world better, you know, and fishermen have that same desire. You know, fishermen are constantly interrogating the natural world. So really, fishermen and scientists are both involved in collecting information. It's just different styles to get to that understanding. Fishermen's perspective is important because they are on the ground, and so they have a very unique tie to the resource and have a very kind of important first-hand interaction with the populations that we're studying. And so getting that perspective is incredibly important. So I think that the fishermen really see that sustainability is important for crab and they want that. They want to be involved in the research. This is an opportunity for an investment into their future towards sustainability for crab management. Alaskan fisheries have had this tremendous period of stability for decades, but now we're starting to see this volatility. We're starting to see stock collapses in crab, in fish species. And so really more than anything else, climate change and our fisheries is a story of not being able to take that stability for granted anymore. These fisheries keep our communities going in such a tremendous way. If we want that success to continue, we have to start understanding that volatility. We understand that the ecosystem and climate is playing a pretty important role in parts of this. And we hope to get to a place where we can understand that there's new approaches and new management that would allow for not just a recovery, but actually getting to a place where crab are showing a good positive sign again. One of the really cool areas that we have focused on more recently is tagging crabs to determine more about movement. So by putting satellite tags on animals, we can track them in times of year when we're not out on the water. That's what's made that research so successful. We recognize the human element. We recognize the importance of the data and the analysis because it supports that human outcome. How do we separate the objectivity of science from the emotion of human affairs? And the answer is that you can't separate them. Fisheries are the story of how people work with natural ecosystems. And so you've got to have both the, the objective science, but then the human side, the emotional side, the passionate side. Those two come together for fisheries. Yeah, we're trained to be very dry and black and white and follow the data, but you just feel the human side of the data when you're managing this. And you know, you're operating at that intersection of economics and conservation. Fishermen and fishing communities are famous for their ability to overcome hardship. There's huge resilient capability in fishing communities and that gives us hope going forward.